Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to TFP on the 90 Min YouTube channel. Lots and lots to get into. We're going to look back on the Champions League semi-finals. Manchester City absolutely battering Real Madrid. Uh, wonderful performance from Pep Guardiola's side. We're also going to look ahead to the weekend's action. We're going to be talking uh, Manchester City's game against Chelsea, in which, of course, they can be crowned champions. They could be crowned champions before that if Arsenal lose at Nottingham Forest on Saturday. We're going to talk about the race for the top four. We're going to do some Chelsea chat uh, with Dan and we'll, of course, be talking about the relegation fight. We've got to do a bit of Ivan Tony as well because we haven't spoken about this. Um, we knew that something was coming, but it's... Uh, it's finally here, an eight-month ban. Feels a bit excessive to me, but we'll get into it uh, in a little bit. Uh, Grizz Khan, real football man, welcome back to the show. Got a big smile on your face today. No, 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 just reading some of the stupid comments. Um, <laughs> you either smile or cry or laugh at them, but guys, keep it respectful. Even if it's at Harry. <laughs> still, keep what, it, still keep it respectful. No, but it's like, uh, sometimes I cringe at some of the comments, like, what are they talking you know, you know, We've all been have doing fun, this. have banter, have a laugh. We've all been but, doing this a long time yeah. now, like literally it's in it in one ear out the other. Like, exactly, like, exactly. But come but, but most of them are regular, so that's what just pisses you off even more. Like you like, know the drill, man. It's all good love. But anyway, yeah. I look back at the comments the other day. We never get nice comments. Nice comments. Never. Like Oh, yeah. do you want some nice comments? Yeah, leave us nice I'll, comments. I'll leave someone it's for always, a burner. I'll this guy is the most deluded guy in the world. Yeah, I know, I know, it's mad. <laughs> but they, they're still here, so we're doing something right, right? They still come back for more. But now, nah, yeah, loads to well, get into. It's loads. like when you go and read reviews for like a, a <laughs> restaurant or a hotel, it tends to be the people that are moaning that take the time to comment. Mm. And there'll be a lot of people that quite enjoy it, but don't feel the need to. By people who send complaints to the BBC. <laughs> what are you doing like, yeah we, we do love the engagements though you know do tell us uh, what you think of us just be nice it'd be like it'd be nice to be nice and we will nice do nice. we will do some questions as well uh, a little bit later on in the show remember the super chats are open again if you want to get uh, your message over to us don't forget to like subscribe all of that stuff uh, Dan Charles is back with us Mr. Chelsea how you doing yeah good 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 to see you how you no feeling no pots yet no yeah. why yet. it's uh they, you know, just giving it more time to drop it at the, the right moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to actually, you know, another day closer to the end of the season. That's that's the the big positive, at least. Yeah, you must have checked out of this season a little while ago. Yeah, I mean, I've just it, there was actually, you know, the Bournemouth game was a nice little gift, you know, over that bank holiday weekend, you know, uh, to actually feel the, the rare thing of a win and actually, you know, not getting battered by Nottingham Forest last weekend was a uh, there, there was still some positivity there. So you know, you got, you take what you can and just you know, I, I'm enjoying the weather turning a little bit nice. Poch, sort of my preferred candidate, about to be announced and. Just, just con contractual obligation now for the rest of the season, basically. Um, I, I don't know if you know, but I'm a massive Chelsea fan for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> massive Chelsea. Like, I've done a full turn. Well, also, because we could we could help you in the top four. Absolutely race, so. that. Absolutely that. There is no way <clears throat> a club stature of Chelsea Football Club, and I've been pumping this agenda out and narrative. I'm going to continue. Mm. You're playing Newcastle, Man City, and... Uh, United. 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 There is no way Chelsea Football Club lose all three. Like, I don't give a Have shit. Have you been watching us this Exactly. Season? But this is the point. The point is now, the last game of the season, you're, you're home to, to Newcastle. Mm. Super Frankie Lampard's last ever probably game. Yeah. As manager. As yeah. manager. Mm. Full stop now. Nah. Oh, Chelsea. Uh, it should be his last game. <laughs> Chelsea, surely, get another care, take surely a you won't get smashed on the last day. Like, even if he gets a draw. Chelsea have got something for me. All the slander... All the cussing that I've done to Chelsea, surely they come good no, for No, but me. what's going to happen is we're going to get to the final day of the season and then if it's a case where if Newcastle don't win, Liverpool get top four, Chelsea fans inside Stamford Bridge will be wanting us to lose. Just so <laughs> Liverpool... We were that can't happen. Like, we were celebrating at the, the, the final day of last season, we were celebrating the goals that were going in for Man City. Unbelievable. So, yeah, Grizz, unbelievable. and you've been very, very forthright with your... So dislike for Chelsea. And so I don't you, dislike Chelsea. Both of I just said that they've operated poorly this season. Yeah. And so that's what I said as well. But, but you've actually gone on yeah, record and said slightly more. Yeah. Uh, you've actually said I hate Chelsea. Wait. Okay, are you calling me the Patrice Ever of the panel? <laughs> well, that with that jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to turn up in a red jacket yeah. last night. <laughs> um, Scott, concerned now about your treble? 
being matched? Uh, it's no concern. It's inevitable, really, isn't it? Um, it's just a question, really, of the means of it. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, people in the comments, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, Lots of, um, they are a fantastic football team. They an are. absolutely fantastic football team. I will give them that. They are absolutely... They have the best coach in the world. They have the best striker, probably. The best midfielder. And they're just the best team in general. Uh, it's just... It's about time, really, isn't it? That they did this. It is. Um, a few nice comments since we... as uh, Begged for them. As begged... <laughs> <laughs> In the comments after the show as well, you know the ones that yeah. actually stick. But. As uh, Bear Eats World said, are they moaning about the moaning? <laughs> I yes. guess that is kind of what we were doing. Um, Pac-Man says, here's a nice comment, Harry. That haircut will look great when we batter you at Wembley. <laughs> yeah, because obviously if City win everything, we'll play in the community show as the runners up, won't we? Oh, yeah, true. So, yeah. True. yeah, great. Another battering on, <laughs> on the end of uh, Manchester City. Um, Aram says, Scott is the most sensible United fan on Twitter. But it's a low bar. <laughs> support Man United. Fair enough. I'll take it. <laughs> it's a small win. Uh, Mitchell says, uh, love your work, boys. Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to pick it. Uh, James Gunn says, Evian over Highland Spring. I agree with you, but they don't have Evian in the shop next door, which is disappointing. Kieran says, the drip is incredible on Grizz. Looking sharp. Oh, you compared me to Patrick Seven. Right? So, <laughs> yeah. He looks sharp. I'll I'll take, you that. Did you see his yeah. clip last night of him yeah, going yeah. on and dropping yeah. S bombs? Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Oh, Embarrassing, right. really. <laughs> um, we've got some um, super chats. Uh, Faris, thank you so much. Says, ignore the hate, lads. Big up to you lot and much love. Um, we're only playing like it, it isn't that big a deal like, yeah yeah we're not I, I genuinely we don't, don't hate all of you yeah. like I'm not up at night worrying about <laughs> worrying what about someone said about yeah. me in the comments no I just find them the, the repetitive ones a bit like grow up like yeah you can say what you want to us mm. but the repetitive ones the same thing every week is boring think of something different I've got to read this out um, it's not necessarily a discussion we're going to do today but um, Ash says no other sport ignores and celebrates cheating um, obviously referring to Man City, the charges that are hanging over them. And there's been a lot of conversation about this since last night. Uh, we don't know whether they're guilty or not, right? We, this is a thing that's ongoing. Yeah, we until the, the verdict comes out, we can't sit with any chest and say yes or no. But what we can say is that they are an unbelievable football team. However they got... I think, I think are, that's half of the problem, though. Hmm. Everybody's taking that... The beat... The, we are, are we going to get into it? Am I going to get into it? Uh, let's do it a little bit. Come on then. I think everybody looked at... Because City were perfect. They were absolutely perfect last night. They did everything perfectly. They battered Real Madrid. Mm. The team, the all-conquering Real Madrid. Um, but I tweeted at the time, I think they said on, on BT commentary, Real Madrid are all over the place. And, well, they were. But how do you compete, even if you're Real Madrid with a club that has been built in this way, you know? This is the this is perfection. This is footballing perfection that we finally reached. And they have since 2008 put billions of pounds into the club from the very top to the very bottom. Uh they've taken Barcelona's officials, Soriano, Begiristain. They waited four years for the world's best coach. They gave him three goalkeepers, eight full backs, the world's best striker. And finally, they're there. And obviously, there are the charges hanging over it. So we, we await and see. We have no idea when this will be, uh, this will, we'll have a decision on this. Uh, but there's a reason there's been charges from UEFA and charges from the Premier League hanging my, over City. My the, issue is gone. Well, I think what people were trying to say last night is that, yes, City are absolutely perfect. They are perfect. But there's a reason why they're this perfect. Because they've gone and from they've picked out the very best of football in every single area. And they've done it for 15 years. And they finally got to the point of perfection. Nearly. They need to win them all first. But there wasn't enough. That is what people's argument is. There wasn't enough uh, of the other side of the argument. It was more, look how good this football is because it was it was fantastic. But sorry, Harry. Yeah, no, no, you're right. The, the football is fantastic. And, and I guess my issue is, 
you're the Premier League, right? You're going to roll out these charges because obviously you think there's some wrongdoing. You need to go there with conviction and make these stick. Because for all the time that this is in the phase or stage that it's in now, there'll always be that argument back and forth. Well, there are charges, but they've not been found guilty yet. If I'm the Premier League, I don't know that I would have released that and gone public with it until I knew that I could put them in a corner and, and essentially finish the job. Because I think... Well, it doesn't work like that because they, they've had to put the charges out there and now it goes to an independent commission which will go mm. through each of the charges. Mm. And I don't think there's a court of arbitration for sport appeal on this either. I think this is this goes to this panel and then that's it. And you, uh, Ivan Tony, I think the Ivan Tony, the fact that Ivan Tony came out and got punished yesterday for eight months on the same day that this happened. I saw a few tweets floating around of, look how serious a, a punishment can be for a footballer who breaks rules. Uh, it's it's the same it's the same conversation, just a different. This, this is about a football club, you know. But I think with Ivan Tony, you always felt that there was going to be some sort of punishment administered. So although it took an age, which it did, you always felt that it was coming and it was in the pipeline. With Manchester City and this situation, you don't even know if it's coming because you don't because you've seen City get out of the UEFA one again, rightly or wrongly, we don't know. But because you've seen them get out of that. You're sitting there thinking, I'm not even convinced that this is going to stick either. So then if you're not convinced it's going to stick, how can you, like, I can't sit there and go, they're cheats, they're cheats, they're cheats. I've, I've can got can to... you honestly tell me, though, and I don't want to, hmm. we're going down this route a little bit too much. Can you honestly tell me that Manchester City, since 2008, have come from losing 8-1 to Middlesbrough, being in the lower leagues the years before, to posting the world's highest revenues? Ahead of Manchester United and Real Madrid, I agree with you. Yeah, legitimately. No, that's that's the question. Yeah, that, Prob that's probably the question. not. Probably not. If I was a betting man, no. But hmm. there's the truth, and then there's what you can prove. And my concern is not that is not anything other than I don't trust the Premier League to follow through and finish the job if they believe there is wrongdoing. It's not in the Premier League's hands. It's, well, in, the, it's it, in the commission's it, hands. Even the independent commission, because if if it's taking so long you start to have doubts, don't you? I think with Ivan Tony, it was a bit different because, I, I mean, I personally didn't have any doubts he would be punished. It was just how long for. Um, this is such a difficult one, isn't it? And, and it's true, timing of these kind of debates or arguments or whatever can be vital to the, to the actual discourse because it can sway one or the other depending on the timing, very much like. So people could say it's a bit salty to be talking about it the day after they put in one of the most complete performances I've ever seen. It was Over probably team. their best performance under yeah. Pep. Most, most teams' performance. Like, that was mind-blowing, that football and, the, and, and the, the, the total control. But then, obviously, people are going to layer that out and then see where that control came from. How has it started? You know, I remember... Sorry, guys, but I remember Ben Johnson. I was only a little kid. But I remember Ben Johnson <laughs> striding away from everyone, thinking, how's this guy so much better than world-class athletes in a final like he's Michael Johnson no Ben Johnson the oh, old okay. the, the older sprinter Canadian sprinter who's oh, okay who uh, obviously later on got done for 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 uh, doping basically um, even Lance Armstrong more recently you think to yourself how is this guy so clear of every other competitor mm. We're seeing that with Man City now. They are so clear of every other team. Is it all natural? Are they just magnificently, uh, magnificent array of footballers? Of course they are. But then how do you how do you get in a position like this? And this is the question that's going to be asked. And of course we have absolutely no idea what's going to happen with the charges and if they're going to get sort of you know you know, uh, uh, done by them or whatever, that's up to, that's up to the authorities and the, and the legal teams of, of whoever's doing them. But from a footballing point of view, I think it's fair to say that was near perfection. Yeah, but it, that thing will always be looming over the top of it, which is why the wider footballing world won't ignore it and just go, actually, the football's great. And the, my, my, me personally, I've decided, just, just me personally, nothing to do with anyone else, just me personally, I've decided... Until we get results of that, I'm just going to speak about the football and how amazing it is. But if it comes to light that they it's been proved, then you know it will be yeah. all worthless. 
you can say what you want, talk what you want, glorify your football, whatever you want. It was useless because you cheated mm. and you was proven guilty. But up until then, I'm just going to speak about their football because it was mesmerising. Dan, you brought up a really interesting point before we started the show about if Manchester City are in this league above everybody else and you know, ha- however they got there, if they're in this position now and it's just inevitable that they're going to just pick up trophy after trophy after trophy, you brought up a point around what constitutes success then for other clubs. And this really resonated with me because over the last week, all I've heard is Arsenal threw the league away, yeah. Arsenal this and that. But if you're competing against a team that we're all agreeing is unbelievable, then you, you have to change what you deem as being successful, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's it makes things a little bit more challenging and it probably changes the the way clubs, particularly a number of big clubs in, in England, look at themselves because Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool want to see themselves as, you know, head of the table. They want to see themselves as um, at the top of the food chain and in, and in a lot of ways they are I mean I, I can understand why Man City fans get frustrated with some of the discourse that goes around sort of whether it's these big wins and you know people talk about because usually Man City are beating another club who have a lot of financial power you know if there's it, it, it's sometimes hard to the, the, the expression I've used is like champagne socialism effectively like we're talking about Arsenal 60,000 seat a stadium Massive club, massive institution in in world football. Um, Man United. Last night it was Real Madrid, arguably the biggest club in the world. You, we're not talking about you know. I, I I have less sympathy for those clubs comparatively to say if we were to start talking about like clubs in the in the Championship in League One, League Two, uh, where there are real problems because the gap in financial sort of um, weight and stuff like that, and and clubs going out of business, but. In terms of, yeah, in terms of how an Eric Ten Hag, Mikel Arteta, now Mauricio Pochettino at Chelsea, Jurgen Klopp, how do we judge these coaches if we all accept that next season the likelihood is until Pep Guardiola leaves, whenever that is, until there's a massive drop in, in City's quality, as fans, as we're sort of analysing what is deemed a success, you know, is it actually in two to three years' time if City is still very dominant, will we look back at this Arsenal team in a, in a much better light like maybe we do now with you know the way Spurs kind of in some ways punched nah. out their weight a few <laughs> years ago um, and that's what makes it I, I think a real challenge particularly for, for elite coaches who are under so much pressure to to sign these big because these clubs all these clubs we're talking about are still going to be spending big they're still going to be the biggest spenders in the transfer market so it's not like we're talking about a, 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 the clubs under Man City being ones who have absolutely no wealth and can't do anything in the transfer market, but uh, as Scott, you know, demonstrated, it's like to match what City have built in one season, in two seasons, is is very difficult. I mean, I don't think we've seen, at, at least my life watching football. You know, there were times when Man United were very dominant, but not to this level, like not to this ease. That's that's the scary thing. The way they, you know, Man United still had fallible moments. They still had moments in seasons when. Or periods when they didn't win the Premier League because of Chelsea, because of Arsenal. Um, I, I just it, the, the fear is it's such a machine that just goes on and on and on. And you know, I, sometimes I think, well, there'll still be a League Cup available, there'll still be an FA Cup. But I mean, yes. if they do, the, if they do, the, if they do the treble, what's to say they can't do the quadruple? God bless Southampton, by the way. Yeah, Nathan Jones. Nathan South, Jones. Like, Nathan Jones, our saviour. Um, it's his biggest achievement. Yeah, so I, I think the discussion point, you know, just for fans heading into next season of these these big clubs who we expect to be competing for the top six places, um, you know, the five below Man City, is is what what does success look like? Because if you if you can't win the Premier League title, how are you judged? You know, you st- I mean, there's a, there's an argument to say Ars- Arsenal, and sorry to come back to Arsenal, Harry, but you had 50 points halfway through the season. You were ahead of City, and as we said the other day, two wins in seven mm-hmm. at the time of the. It's, if you had four or five more players next season, I'm not saying it's not impossible, but I think other other clubs might be in that position. It's just we we're saying City are basically perfection now. We weren't three months ago, you know. Yeah, they've yeah, built yeah. to this point. But it's about it's a bit about sustainability as well, isn't it? Because you knew that City were were not at their best, but you knew they could grow. Yeah, and you knew that once they got into gear, they could sustain it. 
And I think like this thing with Arsenal, 50 points, 19 games, I never at any point thought they'd get to go on and get 100 points and double that over the course yeah. of the second half of the season. <coughs> so it's a bit about sustainability as well. But look, for, in the interest of balance, because... We, we have to, all, yeah, we, of course we have to talk we, about the game. Yeah, yeah we've all said how good Manchester City were in football in terms on the night. Put all of that to one side. Now well, I want to know where's all the guys that were telling me that I'm deluded for thinking that they're going to walk over. Do you remember the comments we were getting like when I said, you know, Man City will, uh, will thrash Real Madrid? They were like, uh, have you not watched Real Madrid and Heritage and whatever? And if it wasn't for Courtois, guys... Pulling off, did you see those, that second save? Oh, it was an, yeah. uh, one of the best saves I've ever seen. I've, I've, it's one of the, it is, it's one of the best saves you've ever. The first like, one seen. was on Haaland for me because he hit the head. No problem, here, but the second that's one fine. Had. You're right. I agree with you. Even though he, that reaction to make sure it doesn't still go in was brilliant. The, but the second, anyway, the point being, the one he tipped around the post, the camera angle actually helped because you kind of got the full view yeah. of like the tip mm. around the post as well. If it, yeah. that that could have been six seven. Yeah. In a Champions League semi final. They're doing that to everyone, you know. And that's Real Madrid. Yeah. And that's Champions League. I've said it. I've done, a, done a, 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 a European show on my channel last night, and we were sp speaking about some of the questions. But one of the questions was Is this the best Man City team? And I think it's, forget Man City team, I think if they do complete what I know, I think, believe, I think we all kind of believe that we'll com complete. I think it goes down as, as I'm ready to have the conversation as the best team ever in the Premier League. It's, it's only, this version it's only of Barcelona. It, it's a, if they do it, so, it's, it's only that Barcelona. So stylistically, and then obviously that next question comes in terms of, and it's, that's subjective, right? You're, you might prefer the Barcelona way. You might prefer the Chelsea under the first Chelsea under mm. Mourinho or the second, you know, contrasting differences because yeah. the first Chelsea were very entertaining. The yeah. second was a machine. Yeah. Very much like this Man City team. Mm. The Aguero, the Silva, the Yaya Torre was a fantastic team to watch. Mm. But this one, for me, in terms of if you want to outplay them, they'll outplay you. If you want to be a, a, like set piece merchants, they can because they've got six. Like six four centre backs, Rodri, Rodri, Harland. Harland, and Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> yeah. Seven, six four plus, so they can outpower you. They're more physical than you. They're they're, they're more organised than you because this is where the coaching comes on, and because he's the best coach in world football, bar none. You put all of those ingredients together, and you get pretty much the perfect football team, <coughs> in my opinion, right now in terms of efficiency and output. And that's what they're showing. They may not be everyone's cup of tea in terms of watching them play, like the first Man City team or his Barcelona team. Do you know, this, this is like, that Barcelona complete? team were near perfection as well. They probably are the closest thing we've ever seen to perfection. Yeah. I didn't actually enjoy watching them because they passed you to death. And I like a little bit of risk. And they, they just completely eliminate risk because they all know where they're passing. They all know where to run. They all know where to pass. They all know how to pass the ball to the back post and tap in. That's what City do. This version of City is actually the one I've, I won't say enjoyed watching, because I'm going to enjoy watching them, but it's the best one for me to, it's the most entertaining team for me to watch because they've changed oh, the really? way that, I think Pep's City before Haaland. See, I'm opposite. Were more. Really? Yeah. I thought Pep's City before Haaland were more like that Barcelona team with a false nine, so, this kind of thing. Yeah, but I love the I football. like the chaos of the Haaland battering ram. I, I team, like it. They can change it up. But, no, 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 but this team, to me, is the most efficient. <clears throat> I think that team, in transition, you could have had a go at. They're so organised and tactically spot on. Madrid didn't even have a counter-attack on them. Like, they are so organised and brilliant out of position, which is, again testimony to the tactical uh, mm. genius that is Pep Guardiola of course and he always says it and he's very open about it you give me my players you give me the best players and I'll make you win things in a certain style so fair play to that I thought it was <laughs> any other fan looking at that you just got to just sit there and just say yeah, wow and, and it's the way he's changed it that that's the special thing for me like oh it's been able to because you mentioned that you let's not forget backs. this let's not forget this is a transition season really Haaland because remember stylistically we were saying is Haaland making them worse are they struggling to get Haaland into the game he's managed probably to win the treble whilst evolving the style mid-season yeah <coughs> that's huge and also yeah. losing some big characters <coughs> to 
had been <coughs> kind of prominent figures for him since his first season. You know, Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, uh, Zinchenko was a was a key squad player. Cancelo. C- Cancelo too, you know, and, and it's easy to forget. that I thought that could have been seen as a mistake, letting Cancelo, a, a player of that quality, leave mid-season. But, you know, you look at some of the players who've come in, you know, Nathan Ake has had a, probably his best season of his career this year, you know, in terms of... And I didn't see that coming, I've got to say. You know, I didn't either. You know, I thought there was a level to him. I thought, again, good squad player, but probably isn't an elite player. You know, one you could trust on these big nights. The way he's... um, I saw someone make an argument, and I don't think it's ridiculous, you know, saying that John Stones should be in the conversation of a player of the year. The way he's evolved John Stones into a player, the Liverpool game was one that really stood out to me because they didn't actually have Haaland that one. And going into this kind of central midfield role at times and, and the way he, he as a player has had to evolve. I think it's very impressive those players who have been there the longest because it's it's also like evolution. Like you have to, because of the way City invest in their team, they're so ruthless with if a player isn't serving our purpose anymore and they want to they want to move, they're going to be moved out. So but not have, a silver will go in the summer. You know, if, there's yeah. a, if there's a move for him, he'll go. Probably Ilkay Gundogan yeah. as well. Yeah, but, though, but you have faith uh, and, and probably Man City fans because there's a lot of evidence now you lose say Raheem Sterling who, who scored so many goals for Man City over the years big goals too but you're going to replace him you know Alvarez has come in this year and, and I'm sure will have a stronger influence in the next year the way Jack Grealish who was heavily criticised last season has done what I think a lot of us thought he would do but give yeah. him a second season under Guardiola and he'll, and he'll show his talent and that's exactly what has happened so I, I do agree in terms of like that I think Gary Neville was saying something in terms of how direct they are and the fact that it is quite funny for all that we talk about Guardiola's kind of passing style and, and kind of this, you know, how um, deep their tactical sort of setup is. The fact that, uh, particularly against Arsenal and, and Bayern Munich as well, you know, it was kind of route one at times. It was well, they direct, just went right through the middle. You know, right, right through the middle. But they can also, when they haven't got Haaland, they can also still go back to that yeah. old. Yeah. And that, that, that's what's scary. Yeah. Yeah. The way they can play different ways, different styles. They've still got the basis of what Pep Guardiola brought in the beginning, but now they've evolved to a point where if you nullify them one way, they'll hit you another this way. This was one of my biggest criticisms of Pep before was he, he didn't have a... He probably did have a plan B, but it was always... It always looked the same. Make plan A better. Yeah, yeah, it was always make plan A better. And ultimately, there would be a team or if they missed chances one day and they got caught on the break, that would be it. But I think now he's completely cast aside that argument he i think he can change things up Mm. i think even he has altered his philosophy to think i've got to adapt a little bit more to what modern football is and he was the leader of that like Mm. he's gone and bought erling Haaland in liverpool brought darwin nunez in the big man strikers back uh and i think pep is backed by the machine he's he will he will go down as one of the greatest if not it's the debates up there about whether he's the greatest all time of all time or not he's got to win the treble first with city to actually you know activate that conversation to a new level from what it is already but yeah um i think pep is the ma- like he's by far and away the the best coach in the world currently and I don't think anybody gets close to City for as long as he's there. Yep. And yeah, I agree with that. I mean, maybe, you know, the, con- the previous conversation about sort of like, what, how does it impact everyone else's expectations? I mean, as sort of Chelsea have proven in recent years, just because you have a lot of money and ability to spend it does not mean it's, it's just a guarantee for success. And I think that um, maybe a hope of everyone's is that when, once you take Pep, that incredible coach out of that system and someone else goes in there, you could see them falter, yeah. you know, and as we've seen in, in certain ways with like Liverpool, you know, they're, they're of course working under different sort of parameters in terms of what they can spend and what their owners are willing to spend. But like, you, football can change, football can still change quite quickly, you know, in terms of you make a few wrong decisions. Um, but I do think Pep is the, the, the I, I just can't see a scenario where Pep's there and it just all goes horrendously wrong. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. he hasn't had that in his career when it's when he's left clubs. Well, the, he's still left. Arguably, very the, high the level. one season he had, it was his first season at City, <coughs> and he got time. He changed mm. things around, and he came back and won the mm. league. Um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> Rampersad saying, "Our City still robots." Yeah, because they play, they they taught, and this is what my argument always was: is they have a very specific, they have very specific instructions to carry out on the football pitch, and it's so much more noticeable than anybody else. Mm. And they more often than not just absolutely annihilate it to perfection over and over and over and over again. And that's kind of why I 
stuck by that, and now they have a, a striker who is superhuman, who didn't even score last night. They didn't even need him. Yeah, uh, that's but, a scary thing. Yeah, he didn't and, and one other thing I'll, I'll mention as well: that you can, they do spend a lot of money on players. They have, but they also, and Pep pro- probably also is due credit for this. Manuel Kanji, right before he jo- joined City, he had a bit of a disaster in him at times. Yep, fair to say. Um, United were linked with him before they signed him, and I thought, if United game, they're probably getting more of that Akanji. What Pep has managed to do is, you know, he's a, he's a big lad, quick. He can do sums of maths in his head in a second like that. Very, very smart lad. You know, he's slotted into that team straight away uh, and looks all, like, <coughs> unbelievable, part, unbelievable part of the team. Can play in multiple positions. And that's what City are doing. They don't have to spend... 70, 80, 100 million on every player. They can pick up players for, I can't remember how much it was, 15, 20 million, mm. wasn't it? Um, yeah, they they are here to stay. The only hope we have is that Pep does the, if Pep does the treble, he walks away. <laughs> um, Ian <laughs> Zimmer, Ian Zimmer says, Dan, are you sure you're a Chelsea fan? I've never heard one speak so sensibly with logical points. Are you sure? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, just quickly on Ivan Tony, we, we kind of touched on it. The ban has been um, announced eight months um, 232 breaches of the gambling rules. I mean, I've, I haven't got an issue with Ivan Tony being banned mm-hmm. because the rules are rules and if you break them, you deserve to be punished. But it does feel a little bit ironic given the way that football promotes gambling mm. and betting. Like We kind of have to get into a place, don't we, where the two are no longer married together if, you know, if, if we're going to get rid of situations like this as well is it a harsh ban eight months i mean you've got to bear in I, mind i don't know you d- we we're not gonna know the exact things that he's done <coughs> I I guess, are, don't we i i don't i i personally don't i haven't looked into it enough but and we don't yeah. even know if he's done them um, all of them himself yeah you know you know yeah um typically like i think kieran trippier had a, a 10 week ban or something like that for similar offenses although he did seven and was found guilty of four and this is 200 odd charges that he's admitted to so you know it's it's along with uh, other rule breaks down the years I, I, I saw people comparing Eric Cantona's Kung Fu kick in 95 uh, the Rio like, Ferdinand missed Rio drugs Ferdinand test, drugs test eight months Cantona was nine months mm. it's kind of about that it's about what we expected I think yeah so yeah. I mean yeah as you say we don't know the the full ins and outs of it. Uh, Billy Cometio sent in a super chat. He says, why didn't Harry speak about this last year? Obviously referring to the Man City stuff. Well, there wasn't a, there wasn't a hundred and however many charges lodged really against did, Manchester did. City last year. That yeah. only happened I, I think that, this year. I think year. the conversation is pertinent now because we are finally seeing Man City at their perfect form. That is, that's why the conversation is here because City have now finally managed to get all of the little issues that they had out of their system and they are playing absolute perfection football and they're going to win everything and the fear is how long is this level yeah. going to last for I think that's one of the, can that, I just that's say quickly the on, on, the, on the betting thing I, I am writing a piece uh, for Football London today about this um, and I think there is much, it, there is a wider conversation to be had about betting and, and the culture of it within our country, you know, in, in particularly English football, if you if you compare the level of betting sponsors in in Premier League clubs comparative to the Bundesliga, well, they've Liga. banned them in Serie yeah. A now, and they've even banned mm. crypto related. Well, yeah, there's a, a boom of crypto stuff now as a way of kind of getting around that, and they're trying to get rid of that as well. Yeah. But it's you know, obviously, we've had the announcement in recent months around uh, from the end of uh, partway through the 25, 26 season, they're going to withdraw certain sponsorships, but that doesn't completely eliminate. Um, sleeve sponsorships and as well it goes a lot wider than that you know we look at you know media uh, YouTube sponsorships you know betting plays such a big role where like channels are set up by betting companies um, as well so I I don't just I think there was a great tweet from um, one of the the big sort of anti-gambling kind of um, campaigns that are going against, you know, thinking that gambling needs to basically be eliminated or banned severely, much more severely than it already has. And it was a photo of Ivan Tony throughout his career. And it was saying, you know, if, if you make, you know, young players promote 
these companies from an early age you can't be surprised when they use them and it was Ivan Tony with two player of the month awards with Sky Bet yeah. front and centre on those awards and then also him in a Newcastle shirt with an 8-8 bet sponsorship and then of course with Brentford uh, who have Hollywood bets at the moment as a sponsor yeah. so it, it runs a lot deeper and I think that it could be easy to just look at Ivan Tony as you know a, an individual case yeah, I'm sure he's not the only one as yeah. well I'm sure he's not the only one um, quick super chat alternate Cavs says Scott your 99 United lost the UEFA Super Cup the community shield then got battered in the Club World Cup if City win the six tuple is that what you call it six tuple yeah. this year it's over no debate I mean, I, we, I was was I debating that? <laughs> I know, <laughs> I didn't think you was either. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, thank but you. No, for no it's, it's that that debate will come up. Um, City play. The good thing about United was, like, and the reason why that United team is so revered, they did that with Gary Neville, Phil Neville, Paul Scholes, Nicky Butt, David Beckham, the class of Ryan United, Giggs, the kids, yeah. That Champions League final team that you can throw you can throw around I'm just gonna try and do this off the top of my head. How much does that team cost? Not a lot. It's not a lot for that day. Um and that's the the difference with the Barca team as well is Pep picked Sergio Busquets out of Barca B and just put him in the team. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And this is why I think maybe those teams are looked back on because they, they use youth products. And Phil Foden obviously is a, a generational Held up as a generation talent, can't get in the team. But then they decided to replace him with a hundred million star from Jack Grealish to, to to give Fold and the rest. So yeah, look, there is far more sympathy. <laughs> yeah, they did, didn't they? They're, they're watching his development while a hundred million uh, Jack Grealish takes his place. But look, you're right. That is the only reason why those teams were looked back with more fondness because of the way they had youngsters and academy players, yeah. as opposed to buying. Well, not the only everything. reason. Whoa. There are 115 yeah. reasons. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, which we will see. Anyway, um, just quickly, yeah. was, so we all assume that City are going to go on and, and win the treble now. This was the final yesterday. I remember last week I said it. I said if they beat Real Madrid, that's the, that's the treble final. But So what's the more difficult game now going into the, the running of the treble? Man United, their bitter local rivals in the FA Cup final or Inter in Istanbul. The in United Istanbul fan final. base is feeling sick about that because... They're not the favourites by any means going to that game. Big pitch at Wembley, you know. United have won there already this season, but City generally, <coughs> when City generally get to Wembley, they wipe the floor with most teams. Mm. I think Arsenal beat them at Wembley once, right? Did they? In or? the FA Cup, yeah. Yeah, but that was a, that's a different category. What we beat them this season in the, in the first trophy of the season. Oh, yeah, the, but, but, the but one Darwin that, Nunes celebrated. But, but, and like, we beat them last year in the semi final as well. So we've beaten them at semi final, but Liverpool are a good team again. Uh, but. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, I think Man United, the reason why I say Man United is because they've still got that speed in transition, which Inter Milan haven't got. And I know yeah. we look forward to the Champions League final probably at a later date, but that's the only thing. But then again, in return, Man United's key players look tired, battered, bruised. Casemiro, Varane, Shaw, these guys that they relied on in the early part of the season just don't look fresh enough. That's my fear. Um, Philippe says <coughs> if City win the treble and four in a row Pep goes above Sir Alex Ferguson in the sort of managerial rankings would you be willing to concede that Scott? I'm always going to back Fergie to be honest that, he, he made miracles out of nothing Alex Ferguson. I, I think it's just difficult um, I think we did a we did a show what was it rival months ago about this we were, speak, we were debating sort of like the greatest Premier League coaches I think it's very difficult in the modern age to compare because the longevity of, of Alex Ferguson is just so hard to to write because that's always going to be the thing that a United fan can throw out and say look how long he was at the club look how many teams he created and then you know that team and then refresh it over and over again but I think in modern times if we're, if we're talking about the expectation level of longevity then yeah I think you have to take that context into it, right? And say that it's unlikely that a coach in, in today's game is going to last that long. So, yeah, it probably does come into the conversation. And then it, I think it comes down to sort of preferences, right? Of, of what people mm. kind of, and, and subjective things of mm -hmm. what you enjoy watching. Um, I think also age probably plays a part too. I think if, you know, if you've grown up more so watching the Man City teams that maybe weren't uh, alive or, or kind of that into football when Man United were having their dominant teams and, and really you know you've only seen them through clips on on YouTube or on the TV it probably doesn't resonate yeah it doesn't feel the same um, 
Sorry, go on. No, go on. Um, people want to compare the... F- City played better football than that United team did. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That's Uni- that United team were built on, like... Uh, and City's pressing and hard work is, is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But that United team were just built on, like... You know that community, those values that they have, they would never, ever, ever give up. They were down in injury time and turned it around over and over again. And they had the, and then it all came together and that <clears> played <throat> out in 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 Barcelona. Mm. So, yeah, you won't change my mind. Nicholas Walker says, um, "I'm annoyed by the moaning of other clubs over Man City, Man United, Chelsea, and others have spent billions on poor decisions. Other fans are just bitter because they have gone down the PSG route." And failed. I mean, yeah, I, I, Nicholas, I don't think anyone's saying that other clubs haven't spent money. I think we all acknowledge that there are clubs out there that have spent big money. What, what the problem is, is that, as we've discussed, and I don't want to keep going around in circles, but there is a cloud hanging over Manchester City's achievements right now mm. until that is, of course, cleared up. And, and people do not understand the difference between United's billion and City's billion. Mm. The Glazer family put Ed Woodward in charge, who has no business running a football club and fo- football matters. Manchester City's owners put the very best in class in every single position in place to make the best decisions for the club. I, I was just going to say, there's no denying that they've made the best decisions, utilised the money, the sponsorship deals, the, 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 the bunk up, so to speak, and utilised it by instilling magnificent operators, basically football operators from the top to bottom. What we're moaning about, I guess, is the moan. means... Well, okay, I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to, to clarify. Balance, balance, balance it, yeah. So there's, so there's no doubt that they've got the best people in charge, they've got the best <coughs> best players, best team. Just how they got there. Mm. Ed says, I missed these super chats. So I do apologise, Ed. He says, <coughs> um, if City play like that at Wembley, we're holding six again. Um, that's yeah. what Ed said. Yeah, that's what Ed yeah, said. agree. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Apologies for missing that the first time around. I don't know how I did, but I did, obviously. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, look, let's um, let's move on because the weekend does have some other stories as well. We've talked about Manchester City's ability to oh, win the Premier God, League this God. season. I wouldn't be surprised if they win it before they even play um, at the weekend because Arsenal feel like they've checked out a little bit for the season now. Mm. Um, Martin and, and Nottingham Forest well. do have, you know, Something they, they know they can basically secure safety this weekend. Exactly. So. It could, be, could all be done this weekend. Relegation. Yeah, it could. If Forest... Oh, relegation as well. Could all be done. Yeah. Everton... No. Oh, even I need to look at the table because I think West Ham can... Rele- West Ham can relegate Leeds and the... And Forest can... If Forest win or draw and... Leicester lose, Leicester to, Newcastle. lose to Newcastle. It's done. Which is very likely. Newcastle losing. Uh, Leicester are losing, by the way. <clears throat> um... I don't want to go back to the previous conversation, but Rangers fan says Sir Alex beat Real Madrid with Aberdeen and then went on to win what he did with United. The debate shouldn't even be a thing. There's a BBC um, documentary on that. I watched it last week. Uh, trying to remember the good times, yeah? <laughs> no, on like, what's Aberdeen have to do with me? But that is what he did. Picking players out of, again, picking players out of the youth team, you know? And he, won, he beat Real Madrid with them. Relegation then, um, lots to play for there. Any two of Forest, Everton, Leeds and Leicester can still go down as we record this. Who do you guys fancy to go down? Leicester are done. I agree with that. I, I didn't realise that they were done until after the, after the game the other day. After the Liverpool I, I, I saw that they play Newcastle. It's Newcastle away, right? Yeah. You know, nah, may, maybe they can pull something out of the bag and maybe, maybe they can get a draw, but... No, nah, they, they've checked they're out. Done. Basically, James Madison or nothing. Yeah, yeah, they checked out. They checked out. It was atrocious. Even though Liverpool were very good and strong and controlled, like they have been for the last seven games, Leicester City were shambles. Once that first goal went in, it was just a matter of how much when, and uh, they go to Newcastle. As we said, still fighting for that Champions League spot. There's not a player playing for that team anymore right now. Vardy's probably bless him. Still trying his guts out for them. The rest still trying are, to win a penalty. The, the rest, yeah. the rest are, the rest are just. It's a hindrance from agent talk. <laughs> They'd rather be preparing for the other clubs than playing football yeah. right now. Basically, I, I, you know, seeing Nottingham Forest uh, up close last weekend at Chelsea. You know, they they look like a team, um, even though they have been in some difficult situations, and and you know, there's still going to be a, a level of tension. They look united. They look aggressive. Um, their, their fans look positive. You know, there's there's a sense of 
still you know they're all it sounds kind of cringy but they're all in it together that there's a sense that you know Leicester look broken and Leeds for me I think Leicester and Leeds are the two for me um, I just think because defensively both are just horrendous I mean I think they've just got two fundamental flaws um, that get exposed on such a weekly basis that I, I just can't they, they can't keep clean sheets um, Leeds have been like this pretty much since they got promoted the, the balance in terms of scoring goals and conceding goals was always kind of uh, bettered when Bielsa was there and they, you kind of make the excuse well, well they're an attacking team but since that balance has gone the other way which was always going to be a threat and Leicester I mean I, when Chelsea beat them in um, March I think it was when, when Potter was still in charge Jeez, they must be bad her, you know yeah like horrendous Leicester like in Chelsea terms of beat them. they've you know it's, it's 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 just terrible who's who's so, leads who's leads fixture scott i've got them. have you got a fixture yeah uh, leads have got you. west ham i think was one of them and tottenham on the final yeah game. that's yeah. it so i think leads can do if if leads are in a situation where they they can win to survive i think they can beat spurs yeah however i think that i'm gonna say i think that it could all be decided this weekend i've got to be honest i think that i fancy forest to get a point where yeah against arsenal and I even Everton to go to Wolves and win. I can see it happening. Everton go so to Wolves West and win. West Ham are kind of a because West Ham leads on, on Sunday. Arsenal still I think, got a but West, West Ham. Are, I think the only thing I'd say West about, Ham are six points ahead of the. Damn. I don't, the only thing I'd say because you look at it in West Ham a bit like Wolves, you'd say, "Well, are they going to be on the beach?" But then also, West Ham are quite a weird team in the sense that they do have some quality players within there who can still kind of provide moments within games. Yeah. And, but if they yeah. get through in Europe tonight, or does that change things in terms of... I mean, they weren't going to take Might the game. Might be riding a wave of happiness. You never know. Yeah. Play with freedom. It can have an impact, can't it? Right, so Dan's going with Leicester and Leeds. Mm. Who are you going with, Scott? Yeah, the two that are there for me. Leicester and Leeds. Grizz? Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be Leicester and Leeds. I... I, I it's, I was thinking that Leeds might pull it off, but yeah, knowing what e- he's got Arsenal at home. Everton got Wolves away and Bournemouth at home. They're winning one of those games. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree with that. That's it. Yeah. I agree. Full house uh, on that. Uh, race for the top four. Um, Scott, you're nearly oh, there. Done. We're nearly done Newcastle there. tonight. Yep. It's done. It's we'll done. do that in a sec, but you guys are nearly there. you got three games left. Um, Bournemouth two. away and then two at home. Liverpool got two games left. Um, you, you've not been confident, but you've been quietly optimistic that you. He can just doesn't want make to say no. Nah, nah, I'm, I'm being realistic. You know I me. Mean? If I had a chance, if I thought uh, there's a chance, if they had to drop points in one of those games, I'd be much more confident. But the fact that both of them have to, or one of them has to drop points in two games, that's not happening. Man United definitely not. Newcastle tonight is the key against Brighton because I know. Dan, I know you're being shambolic and horrific, but on the last day, if Newcastle need a win yeah. at Stamford Bridge, it makes it slightly different as opposed to don't get beat. Because I, I genuinely think that they can go to your club and yeah. not get beat. But if they needed a win, surely Chelsea... I, honestly, I think Chelsea have got just something in them. They've got so, so many good players that one of these games... So therefore, therefore, that's why tonight is, is make or break for Liverpool as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, we still have to beat Villa, which is a very tough game. We would beat Southampton. Is that away from home or home? No, Villa's at home. Okay. But, but they have been a fantastic team yeah. the last couple of weeks uh, under Unai Emery, who's done a magnificent job. We have to point that out as well. So that's why Brighton-Newcastle today, as a Liverpool fan, is the last lingering hope after today. Oh, come on, Grizz. It's not over till it's over. No, today is. It's not over. No, if they win today, it is. For Newcastle. Yeah, if, they win, if, they, if Newcastle win today, it's over. Are Newcastle going to win today? A little draw. I think the only the, the only thing I mean Brighton obviously off the back of an incredible performance on uh, on Sunday and I, I think maybe just the the psychological thing of you know being in this position now and, and having two teams around them in, in Man United and Liverpool who've been here and, and done it multiple times in terms of qualifying for the Champions League I think that's the the big thing um, of just getting over the line I think it is it is crucial you know for, for Newcastle it could be you know it, this is an, an amazing opportunity to get Champions League. I just think their home, the atmosphere, the, the, what they're going to bring, they'll definitely, they've, they've definitely nailed to beat Leicester. We know that. You, you back them to, you know, as you, you point out, like defensively, one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. Um, you'd back them to come to the bridge and, and keep a clean sheet or at least get a point on the final day. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do agree that there is, there is something about Man United-Chelsea. It's a weird game because th- that game ah. usually... 
is just completely atrocious and it's been on a run of like I don't know how many draws at this point um, but, but 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 you get my point though but new, if Man United were t- needed a result at home against Chelsea going to have to play for makes it completely different I was, yeah I think if United point. win tomorrow no Saturday Bournemouth and Bournemouth. they can if they need to beat Chelsea to get top four I think they win yeah that's my mm-hmm. point but it's been fun we made it a little bit exciting at the end after a most disastrous season ever I can remember sound like a Tottenham fan we nearly made it I'm so, sound, don't, I'm don't sound, go I'm, there I'm sound like a Man City fan in the Champions League just happy to be here <laughs> but, uh, but yeah um, my with, with regard, very quickly with regards to Liverpool it was all about we, we clocked out months ago it was just a matter of show us something different show us something uh, that we can look forward to and I think we have shown that. So that's something to look forward to. The Champions League, yeah, it would have been a consolation. One that I would have taken, but I wouldn't have suddenly started shouting from the rooftops. Oh, we're back. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, quick super chat catch up. Scott says uh, AFC handed United the treble by stumbling in 99 and have handed City the treble this year by stumbling. But Arsenal fans. <laughs> just together do your skin. Arsenal fans don't like the B word. You're right. You, you can't like say Arsenal handed United the treble in '99. You can't. You just can't. Like, I, I, we no, we didn't. We didn't hand you it in that semi final. That semi final was probably outside of the Champions League final defeat, the most heartbroken I've ever been. I I, li- I remember that game. Match. Yeah, even today. Yeah, probably. Really? It's up there. It's up there. Just the way. We had the penalty. The Villa Park one. We missed the penalty. Yeah. And then Vieira Watching that as a neutral, away, which never happened. Watching that as a neutral, that's one of the best games of football it I've was ever so seen. So good. I just like I, I, so I remember good. for a while I, I used to go to bed and close my eyes and I could just see Ryan Giggs's hairy chest <laughs> as he was like running. But <laughs> Arsenal was so good in that game. I know. It was I a know. magnificent was... game of football. Those days were yeah proper proper. That was still the best rivalry. Yeah, like, for me as full well. Full blooded, like yeah, yeah. everything into it. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Um, just quickly to kind of finish up, um, Dan, Chelsea stuff. Um, obviously, we've spoken to you about the Pochettino thing before. Um, you're obviously happy with the appointment. Um, anything changed in terms of how you see him getting on? Um, what do you think about Mason Mount? Is that a player that you're going to probably lose this summer? Or I mean, the reporting seems to be that uh, Mount, you know, in terms of uh, Pochettino this week is, is is a key player for him, and that there'll be action to kind of convince him to stay. Um, it's it's kind of hard to know. There haven't been much, you know, serious reporting in terms of like that that being developed, but we'll see in a week or two whether I that think ch- whether that changes. Um, I I do think Pochettino could be, you know, kind of um, the clincher there if he can, you know, give Mount the role that you know makes because I think Mount would want to stay at Chelsea. Um, it's just about getting over the line and yeah in terms of uh, Pochettino I, you know I think it, it's the, the non-negotiable and I think we, I said it last time I was on this show in terms of if you don't trim down that squad significantly there are going to be major problems for anyone we appointed that is the you know that is the caveat to whatever I think about him being a, a, the good profile for, for the group of young players we have and developing them heading into the summer um, there are other big decisions too. You know, even if we do trim a lot of the, the, the fat of the squad, you know, you, what's he going to do with Lukaku? Can that player be reintegrated? Can you get the best out of Raheem Sterling next year after you know a difficult first season? I can't see him leaving this year. Kalidou Koulibaly, are we able to let him go? What happens if he stays? A, a figure like Marco Correa, can you reintegrate that player in and get something out of them? So it's not as simple, and, and I think that it's, it's going to be kind of similar to what he encountered when he arrived at Spurs, is how he copes with the experienced older players who do look like the ones that should be on the way out, those ones that are still going to be around. I, I have a lot of confidence that the younger core of, of players, I think, will do well under him. It's just those older players, how does he manage those personalities um, is going to be key. It's a conversation for another day, but I'm not, um, not entirely convinced that Mauricio Pochettino is going to be able to steady the ship not not steady it he can he should steady it. anyone should my, my analysis of it is i think he will but he never really gets higher than second mm. throughout his entire and like, well maybe maybe pep leaves during that i was just gonna say but who does open field. who does maybe, give up seven, a second maybe yeah, but I, I think he'll at least make chelsea fans feel a bit better about themselves and a, not hard about themselves about their club not hard. providing he gets 
the clear out that absolutely is needed. Been saying that since January. Can't wait till he goes to the new White Hart Lane with a Chelsea thing on his blazer. Oh, that would be beautiful. Um, <laughs> they're going to love that. They're going to absolutely love that. Um, guys, thank you so much. As always, make sure you subscribe, like, all of that stuff. Uh, you know the drill by now. Thank you to Grizz. Thank you to Dan. Thank you to Scott. We will be back on, is it bank holiday this Monday? I can't no, remember. it's the, it's the one after. after. Right, so we'll be back on Monday um, to look back at the weekends and uh, City action. City finally champions. City could be champions. The What's the score going to be, could be done. I think it'll be like 3-0 Man City. I'm going to go 5-0. Is it, is it at the Etihad? Yeah. Oh, they'll, they'll rest players against you, like relax and chill out. Just beat you 4-0. I, I, I would say 4-0. 4-0 as well. Yeah. yeah I think that's but you've got something for me, Dan. I know you have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> against Newcastle and United one of those games you've got to yeah, get a draw. Nice to just a draw nice just a draw just a draw I love you lot I can't I believe Liverpool fans are more optimistic about Chelsea than I am <laughs> <laughs> if Chelsea get something and as a result Liverpool get top four I will wear a Chelsea top on a shirt why are you saying you don't need to say this but <laughs> great I'll do it alright that's how no I'm it's not happening <laughs> <laughs> uh, Big Mad Andy just to finish off says uh, when we were talking about Pochettino He's got Todd Bowley as his joint manager, so that would be interesting uh, to see how that goes. But look, one thing I will say about Poch is he is used to working with pain in the ass chairman, basically. Yeah. Um, so maybe he'll manage that situation a bit better than, than some of the others have done. But anyway, catch you all soon. Until next time, take care. All the best. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.